This is Francesco Porzio from CBS Sports and you're watching Che Golasso. Sit back and enjoy my conversation with Bayern executives Herbert Heiner and Oliver Kahn. Okay, so let's start the, uh, the interview. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. It's a pleasure having, of course, Oliver Kahn, a legend of the club, of the German national team, uh, and welcome to Che Golasso and CBS Sports. Uh, let's start with uh, with with what 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 you are facing. You no, know? after winning ten titles in a row, Bundesliga titles in a row, something unprecedented. You're going for the eleventh, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's part of uh, that's part of our DNA. That's the part of Bayern Munich. Never, never be uh, satisfied uh, with this kind of uh, with this huge success. Ton ten consecutive uh, titles. Um, in the German Bundesliga, yeah, but um, y- you know, um, there's it's a little bit dangerous because we have to fight against, uh, yeah, against the kind of, of complacency. You know, uh, maybe uh, some players they feel a little bit comfortable. You know, they think, oh, everything will go on uh, like it was in the past, and um, you know, it's in the DNA. That we, as the responsible, uh, as the re- responsible people uh, for Bayern Munich, um, that we want to, yeah, to further develop uh, the team, to further develop uh, the club, and that's why we are very active at the moment um, on the yes, on the on the transfer market. You are always renovating. It's one of your secrets, you know, on and off the pitch as well. When do you know that's something? Uh, when do you know when it's the right moment for a change? Because sometimes it's difficult to understand when you have to make a move or not. Mm. So when you know, okay, that's the time for a change in that in that field. Yeah, often it's 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 based on yeah, it's based on a on a, on a special defeat. You know, it's based on a special game. I think uh, last season we were defeated by uh, Villarreal uh, in the in the Champions League uh, quarterfinal, and we are uh, we were very very disappointed and i'm still and i'm uh, i'm still disappointed and it's always our goal you know uh, to belong um to the yeah to the four best clubs uh, best clubs in europe and that means we want to reach the we want to reach the, the the half final the half finals um in the champions league and these are the moments the moments of 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 setbacks the moments of, uh, as I said before, the moments of of, of defeat, um, where we find new motivation. You know, where we, as the responsible people for Bayern Munich, um, where the board comes together, you know, very motivated, and uh, then we, we we set new goals. You know, um, and what we wanted to do is, yeah, to to refresh um, the team. You know, to create a new uh, competition uh, in the team between the players, and that's what I mean. You know, to fight against this kind of uh, of complacency in the team. They are very motivated guys, you know, but it's 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 natural. You know, it's natural after such a long, long, uh, successful time. You know, it's it's natural to think. Um, and even if it's 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 only two or five percent, if you think, oh, yeah, it will go on like this. No, you know, uh, our opponents, uh, they will, um, they are so motivated, you know, in the German Bundesliga uh, to fight against us and uh, to bring us down from the first, uh, from the first place. Um, Yeah, and that's our, uh, that's our thinking. That's the DNA uh, of of Bayern Munich. And that's why we want to, yeah, why we want to reach the the next title, the 11th uh, consecutive German Bundesliga title. Uh, you are now based, uh, not based, but like you are in the US right now. Uh, and uh, the US market is constantly growing, uh, especially in the last years. Uh, soccer, as they call it, uh, uh, while in Europe is called football. No, And um, why do you think it's such an important market for you? Bayern invested a lot also in the United States market. Uh, uh, first, we have a lot of fans here. So uh, we have a lot of fans here, and that's why we are uh, making this, this journey. Uh, we couldn't do it in the last uh, two years because of the pandemic. So it's the first time after, after uh, I think, two or, or, or three years um, 
We want to engage here uh, uh, with our fans. We want to show up here. We have uh, two games, uh, one against Washington. For us, it's also very important to play against a domestic team. Yeah, not only to play against Manchester United, Real Madrid or Manchester City, but we play against Man City in the second game. Um, yeah, I think uh, we have the, the, the upcoming World Cup in 20, I think it's 2026 in US and, and in yes. Canada. If you look at the MLS clubs, they are developing. Um, their development in the last years is, is, is really, is really a, a great we have a collaboration, for example, with uh, with uh, FC Dallas collaboration between Bayern Munich and, and FC Dallas, and um, yeah, that's uh, for us. That's a very very important market, and hopefully, um, it will it will uh, it will grow. If you look at the valuations, for example, of the MLS of the MLS uh, uh, clubs, they are all uh, they are still growing. And that's, I think, a typical sign that 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 all that football is is growing in the in the U.S. And we, as Bayern Munich, as one of the best clubs uh, in the world, we will be uh, part of this uh, very very interesting market. You have a young talent also in your in your roster, uh, despite the transfer rumors. So what's uh, your opinion about Chris Richards and your plan for his future as well? Yeah, I think. Uh, Chris Richards is, uh, I think, is a very, a very talented uh, player in the defense, and uh, we, yeah, we lent him to uh, Hoffenheim for one year, and uh, I think this is always a good way, you know, if if you have players in your team, talented players which are young, but um, you know the competition for them is so. Um, is so hard in a, in a club like Bayern Munich. So it's always the better way for them to play. So not sit on the bench. It's very important for the young players to play. Uh, and I think he, he, he played in Hoffenheim. He, yeah, he played, uh, he played very well. But as you know, um, uh, in, 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 his, in his area, in the defense now, it's... it's quite hard for him you know we have uh, lucas lucas hernandez uh, we have uh, pava we have upamecano now we have uh, delict delict uh, coming coming from uh, from juventus we have the young the young guy tanginion su from from paris so it's quite very very hard to 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 come into the team but you never know you never know what happens and we will see you, you mentioned uh, the signing of Matthijs De Ligt. Uh, uh, it's an incredible deal for Bayern Munich because he's a player for the future. Uh, it, we are hearing the name of De Ligt since years, but he's still very, very young. Uh, why you decided to, to go for him this summer? Well, I think we have a very good, uh, we have a, a very good defense. You know, central players, uh, as I said, as, as I said before, with uh, with uh, Lucas Hernandez, with uh, with Upa Mecano, um, with uh, Pavar, and with uh, Tangi Neon Su. Um, but we uh, try to find um, a, a player who can lead. You know, a player who can can lead uh, in the in the defense. And uh, if you look at at um, Matthias De Ligt, I think he's he's 22, so he's still very young, but he's very present on the on the on the on the field. You know, he's he's also loud on the field, and that's what we need. That's what we need in our uh, in in our defense. We need a player who can, um, yeah, uh, that the others hear. Um, that he's on the field. So um, that's very important for the atmosphere uh, on the field, for the motivation of the players uh, on the field. I like that very much, you know, um, if, it's, uh, if, it's, if it's loud, you know, if it's noisy uh, on the field. <laughs> Uh, another another player that uh, that you by Munich signed this summer is Sadio Mane, who is an an incredible addition for the for the for your roster and also for the Bundesliga as well. It's a it's a it's an interesting signing, you know. And what do you think he can bring to the team? Because while Matthijs De Ligt, of course, is one of the best talents uh, for for the future of the sport, 
Sadio Mane is already a great champion, is a great, great winner. So what's the strategy behind this transfer? Yeah, I think uh, we lost, uh, as, as I said before, we lost uh, Robert Lewandowski to, to, FC, to FC Barcelona, uh, one of the best strikers or the best striker in the world who gave us uh, uh, or who made 30 to 40 goals for us uh, per, per season. And um, I was very impressed um, during uh, the negotiations uh, with Sadio Mane because he decided in, in one or two days, uh, he said, I want to go uh, to Bayern Munich. And, I, and he had a lot of other offers from other clubs. But he said, no, I want to go to Bayern Munich. I want to play for them. I want to win titles. I want to win the, the Bundesliga, the Cup and, <laughs> and the Champions League. And I was very impressed about his, his professionalism and, and his character. And he can play. He's very flexible. You know, he can play um, uh, on, on several positions uh, in, the, in the offensive so yeah, um, we have an absolutely world-class player, and I think he can score uh, a lot of goals. And if you look at our offensive, I think it's 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 amazing. You know, then uh, we have King Kingsley Coman, we have uh, uh, Serge Gnabry. We extended his contract uh, a few weeks a few weeks ago. Um, then we have Thomas Müller. We have Jamal uh, uh, Musiala. Um, uh, we have so many uh, good players um, who, uh, who can play very flexible in different positions. And I think that can be very confusing for our, for our uh, uh, opponents. But nevertheless, uh, uh, if, you, if you lose um, a striker like, like Robert uh, Lewandowski, the best striker in the world, you know, that's never easy uh, to replace a player like him. Uh, just to follow up on Lewandowski, uh, he was, of course, uh, you said this, uh, yourself that uh, probably the best striker that you had in the in the Bundesliga. Uh, how difficult was to take his decision, no? to understand his position and to let him go this summer while you were, you always said on public that you were ready to, you were ready to, to, to wait until next summer at least. Yes, uh, absolutely. But when I said that, uh, I think it was two or two and a half months ago. And um, at this time, uh, we had no other options. And we had no offer for Robert Lewandowski from Barcelona or from another club. And we had no other options for him. So I said, no, uh, he can't go. And, but in the last two and a half months, things changed. You know, uh, now we have uh, with Sadio Mane, an absolute world-class player um, in our team and Barcelona, they make us a very attractive offer, you know, for, for Robert Lewandowski. And um, yeah, so we have the, um, the opportunity to develop the team further for the future. And my job is always to look uh, uh, to the future. And um, yeah, that's why we, uh, we hired uh, De Ligt and we always try to find a good balance in the team between very experienced player, world-class player, international players like Mane and also um, uh, players like younger players, talented players uh, with, a great, with a great future like De Ligt. And there we have to find um, the balance uh, uh, the right balance in the team. And I think at the moment we, we have a very, very um, attractive uh, mixture of players uh, in our roster. Uh, the last two questions I have, uh, uh, one is about uh, a little behind the scenes of uh, how is how difficult it is to keep things quiet with all the media attention mm -hmm. and all the leaks uh, for the transfer market because well, it, uh, it's impossible <laughs> <laughs> in, in Munich it's impossible to keep something secret <laughs> no, I, learned, I, learned honest, it, I, le I learned that in 14 years as a player and now in two and a half years <laughs> as, an, as a board member <laughs> <laughs> because to be honest looking from the outside uh, by Munich you were always really good in, and you are always really good in keep things quiet as much as possible 
Uh, I you know it's so? impossible. You think I so? Think no, so. Never. Believe Co me, never. Yeah. Compared to other teams and other countries, ah, okay. I think yes. <laughs> yeah, but you know that's uh, that's Bayern Munich. You know. And no, I know. I know. Everything. I come from. Different. I come from Italy. I come from Italy. So oh, yeah. you can imagine here oh, how yeah. many oh, yeah. leaks, rumors. So uh, if you think that's impossible, imagine here. Yeah, but uh, I think that's a, that's an interesting topic because that's also part of my job. You know what I have to manage. Um, I, I always have to manage this kind of emotions, you know, mm. and managing all the emotions uh, uh, around the club, managing all all the rumors. Uh, 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 I think that's a big part of, uh, yeah, of, of of my job as as the CEO of Bayern Munich. It, it's one of the most most difficult challenges you probably Absolutely. have to. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, last question I have, uh, and thank you so much again for for the time, is about your your coach Jurgen Nagelsmann, who is uh, uh, is embracing really well what Bayern Munich at the moment wants to achieve. Uh, your your team spirit, your ambition. So, why do you think he is uh, the perfect person in the right place at the moment? Yeah, I think it's it's uh, his. Uh... Yeah, his style, his style uh, uh, of playing. Uh, Bayern Munich all, always wants to play very dominant, a very dominant style, attractive football, very uh, offensive, um, a lot of pressing based on a uh, yeah on a clear plan of the coach. And yeah, Julian, he's still still a very very uh, young coach with enormous uh, with uh, enormous talent, and also his ability to um, further develop our younger players. Yeah, to uh, connect our our youth academy with the uh, professional teams. These are all expectations. You know, we. Um, we had uh, on 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 Julian, and I think yes, last time he won uh, he won his, his his first title, and he knows uh, Bayern Munich. Uh, it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure for for such a for such a young coach. And another ability he has is the ability to learn very fast. He's a coach, and he's a he's a. He's a guy who can learn very fast, adapt himself to new situations, uh, handling um, the team, handling the, uh, the different players and characters, moderating the team, keeping the atmosphere. That's, his, that's, an, enormous, uh, that's an enormous job. And uh, we are very convinced that he is the right uh, coach for Bayern Munich. And that's why we... Um, yeah, we hired him for uh, such a such a long time. I want to start to, to talk with you about the expansion of Bayern Munich outside Germany as well. Uh, the U.S. market is becoming more important year after year. So how do you approach to this market, which is very maybe different from yours? There is no doubt that uh, Bayern Munich has millions and millions of fans outside of Germany and especially here in the US uh, as well. And when we discovered uh, years ago that we had so many fans here in the US and uh, soccer is becoming more and more popular here in the US, we opened our office, uh, uh, our first office abroad here in the US in 2014 because we wanted to be closer to the fans and to really get in closer connection to show them uh, in an authentic way what the real FC Bayern is and uh, how we deal with our fans, with our members and bring the teams, the club, the players closer uh, to the people. And in the meantime, we have uh, around 140 fan clubs here in the US and in Canada for Bayern Munich and uh, still growing. We have a lot of fans and uh, as you better know than me, soccer is becoming more and more popular here. Uh, and especially under the young age, uh, I have read that 54% of uh, the people here in the US uh, uh, which are connected to soccer are under 45 years. So it's really a sport for, for young people. And with the upcoming World Cup in 2026, uh, I'm sure there will be a lot of momentum coming in the next uh, years. Uh, without any doubt, the identity of your club is uh, one of your uh, 
success, no? the, the, the identity that you always kept during the years. What's the secret of it? Because we always talk about the buying identity. Uh, what does it mean, actually? Well, I do believe yeah, yeah, you might know that we have a certain sentence which is called claim, which is called mir san mir. Uh, and this <laughs> defines our, our, our personality, our character. Uh, I think that FC Bayern Munich, and I know the group uh, quite well, uh, as I'm a fan since I was a kid and since 20 years now in the supervisory board, this club has uh, the, the deep desire always to win. They never give up. Doesn't matter what happened. And we have now won 10 German titles in a row and we desperately want to win the 11th uh, this year. And this is kind of a DNA which is in this club. She started already in previous time with Franz Beckenbauer, Gerd Müller, Sepp Meyer, and then continued with Uli Hoeneß, Karl-Heinz Rummenigge, Lothar Matthäus, Oliver Kahn, Schweinsteiger, Lahm, all these players. Uh, and now we have uh, Joshua Kimi, who, who is desperately uh, the guy which we want because they never give up, they never rest, and they always go first. And I think this is the DNA of the whole, the whole club, and this is uh, part of the success. Uh, the second point, uh, which is characteristic for our club, is that we really, uh, 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 how should I say, that we're really attached to our home base. Uh, we are an international club and we are extremely successful internationally. Bayern Munich is now everywhere in the world within the soccer community, but uh, we are seen as, some, as, as a club who, who respects the heritage, the roots, where we are coming from, from Munich, from Bavaria, from uh, Germany. And this balance between, on the one hand, an international knowledge club, on the other hand, uh, that people are proud uh, that uh, uh, for, uh, for where they come from, uh, I think this is what, what makes the club so popular as well. Recently, you uh, sold Robert Lewandowski to Barcelona. It was a big news, of course, for everyone in the world. Uh, how difficult it was to let him go this summer? a player, a legend of the club like Lewandowski. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, Robert Lewandowski is one of the best strikers uh, in the world, there is no doubt. And he played for eight years with us. He won all the titles uh, with Bayern, Champions League, uh, German Championship, uh, uh, the Cup. Uh, he was uh, named uh, best player of the world. Uh, so, uh, therefore, to replace a guy like him is definitely not, not easy. And uh, this made it relatively difficult for us uh, to let him go. Uh, he wanted to do something new in, as he called it, in the last stage of his uh, football uh, career. Uh, and luckily, uh, in the weeks when we discussed it with him, we were able to act on the transfer market. And as you know, we, we got Sadio Mane, uh, where we are extremely happy. He's a world-class uh, footballer. And then finally, we were able to, to let Robert go. Uh, but he is, as I said, definitely one of the best strikers in the world. Were you ready to, to also wait until next summer if, with his contract expiring or his decision was already made so you tried to find a compromise? What was the plan? Yeah, but with, with the decision which we made in the meantime that uh, we bought Sadio Mane and that we were able to prolong the contract with uh, uh, Serge Gnabry uh, who can also uh, play on the same position as uh, Robert. We have now with uh, Mane, with Leroy Sané, with Kingsley Coman, uh, with Serge Gnabry, Müller Musiala, we have now five, six uh, top guys as uh, strikers. And then we said, okay, now we are, we are, we are fine. We are, uh, have a, a great team uh, for the next season. Now we can, can let Robert go and take some money and, and invest it into the future of the club. Talking about the future of the club, uh, Julian Nagelsmann is definitely fitting really well the, the Bayern job. Um, why do you think he fits so well the job? Because I think he's uh, all the things that you're saying, he's the perfect manager in the right place. Yeah. I mean, uh, we know Julian uh, already since, since quite a long time. Uh, he played in Munich as a young kid. He's born not far away from Munich. And uh, we saw him in Hoffenheim. We saw him in Leipzig. And he's a, a diehard Bayern fan. Uh, but what he is first and foremost is that he's an 
excellent coach. He is one of the most talented young coaches which you can find uh, in Europe. Of course, he will gain experience uh, over the over the time, but he is extremely creative, extremely innovative, extremely demanding. Uh, and we are quite happy that we got him. And we have given him a five-year contract, which is uh, unusual uh, for a new trainer. Uh, but we definitely want to build something with him to integrate more young people out of our own uh, uh, school uh, into the roster. Uh, and as you see on the transfer market, we are building the team for the future. And uh, we do believe with the players and with this coach, uh, we definitely have a chance to win the Champions League again in one of the next years.